Hi, and welcome to another session of Reminiscing with History Makers. I'm joined today by Charles Vitali. Charles, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So for starters, uh, when did you join APCO? Uh, I joined in 1999 when I uh, first got hired by my department when we took PST1, uh, initially just to save a couple bucks on the PST training. <laughs> Great. And during your tenure at APCO, uh, tell us what agencies you worked for, some of the positions you held and the responsibilities. Certainly, uh, I'm still with my original agency that uh, from 1999, the Rochester Emergency Communications Department here in Rochester, New York. Been with them for about 24 years. Started my career there as a police dispatcher, did that for about seven years. Decided I wanted to try something a little different. Got promoted to fire and EMS. Uh, I've been doing that ever since. As well, I'm an acting supervisor, classroom instructor, CPR instructor, CTO, all that fun stuff. Uh, in addition to that, I got lucky and I got to help start a secondary PSAP at one of our local ambulance agencies, CHS Mobile Integrated Healthcare. I've been there for about five years and I got to start the program with one of my mentors from ECD, Mary Louise Patinsky, who started the program, brought us in to help train and move things forward with that. And of course, last but not least, uh, APCO. I've been an uh, adjunct instructor with them for about eight years as a contractor and for about the last year, year and a half, I've been one of the consultants for the consulting services. So I've had a very wide range of fun things to do in my career so far. Mm, sounds like it. Uh, what initially drew you to join APCO? Well, initially it was the fact that my agency said you're going to. Uh, <laughs> after that, I lapsed for a little bit and once I got back together, we got sent by my director or then director John Merklinger to the Philadelphia conference with myself and uh, Jeremy DeMar. And we had a blast and that's when I knew APCO was an organization I wanted to be a part of. The networking, the sessions, the vendors, all of it was just such a cool experience. I knew I wanted to go further, get some more training, talk to more folks and get more of that networking in and I haven't stopped since. Hmm. Can you describe for us some of your APCO activities at the state chapter or the national level, level during your tenure? Certainly. Uh, what actually got me really involved in APCO was my RPL project. It was on the Professional Development Events Committee. And through that, I ended up becoming vice chair and then eventually the chair of the committee. So I spent three years as the chair, a year as vice chair, and the rest as a committee member. And that really got me involved in all of it because of the activities that we did at the conference, choosing the sessions and all that fun stuff. So that was a blast and I had a great team underneath me with all the volunteers, you know, they did all the hard work and they absolutely deserve all the credit for that. Currently on the awards committee and the agency program training committee, which are both fun committees to do and, and gives you a, a whole lot of wide variety of what you see out there because you get to see how some agencies run things. You get to see all the great people in the organization. Uh, on the chapter side, I've done uh, chair of the media committee and our, been on the awards committee for our local chapter because I like to make sure that everybody gets recognized for the hard work that they do because we all know we don't get enough pets on the back for that. Mm -hmm. And then probably one of the coolest things I ever did with APCO was go through the CPE program as class number one. And of course the best class, by the way. And got to meet all those high powered names and folks that when I sat down, I looked around and went, I'm not quite sure I'm in the right room, but by the end of that course, uh, course three, it just was amazing at the friendships that I built and developed and still hold to this day. Yeah. You mentioned the CPE being a, a cool thing. Would you say you had another favorite of those activities throughout that all? Uh, definitely course three when we were in Daytona beach and got to meet everybody. We had a lot of study sessions at the, the hotel, but we also got to bond over dinner and those kind of things. So that was just an absolute blast and being able to get together and see all the new folks that have joined and seeing all the excellent work that all the APCO members put together and put out there every day. Would you say your APCO membership has had a direct effect on your career in public safety communications? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, it's pushed me to do things that I've been on comfortable with and probably pushed towards some things that I didn't want to do, but now I'm glad I did. One of those was chair of the PDAC. Uh, Bob Bloom, who unfortunately passed a couple of years ago, 
gave me what he called a battlefield promotion from vice chair to chair when he chaired the conference in Baltimore. And I probably never would have taken that leap without his encouragement um, from the chair position. So that was definitely outside my realm. But even becoming an adjunct and a consultant for APCO itself and being able to do all those fun things without that membership, without that push that definitely would, took me outside my comfort zone and allowed me to do a lot of cool things with my career that I never would have been able to do otherwise. What would you say you like most about APCO? Well, being the past chair of PDEC, I probably should say that in the uh, sessions at the conference, but in reality, it's the people. It's the networking, it's getting to know folks, it's getting to see all of those people that you've been able to talk to over the years excel and do some awesome things or just having that person come up to you at a conference and say, hey, remember when we talked about this, now I'm doing that. And that right there is the best part is seeing the people grow and seeing the next generation getting ready to take over and all the awesome things that they're gonna do. What would you say APCO does better than anyone else? That's definitely gonna be the conference. Training at the conference is just superb. We have some of the best speakers around the world. We have a great number of folks that come in and present from the local centers. We have big names that come in and the networking that goes along with that conference is just amazing. I've made some lifelong friends at those and I've learned quite a bit. It's also great to see your old friends from time to time as everybody gets to catch up, you know, in between sessions or of course at the uh, after hours events. Okay. So now with the advent of NG911, what, what does APCO need to do to stay current with those emerging technologies? Biggest thing is the people. I've seen a lot of Facebook posts, social media, blog posts about, oh, we're already getting video on the center. And of course, my immediate thought is, and how did we train you to take those calls, to take those video inputs? And that's one of my biggest concerns and something I think that we as an industry need to look at is how are we gonna make sure our people are okay? Because that's what it's going to come down to is whether it's a staff psychologist, counseling, um, CISM programs, that type of thing. We got to make sure that we're taking care of the people and we train them on all the things that are coming with that. Um, and that could be a, something as simple as now you're a witness to an event that, oh, did you know you may end up in court? Or how are we going to store all of this data? But when it comes down to it, it's going to be the people. Did we train them so that they can go home? and be fit mentally and physically when they're done with their shift. What stands out to you as a significant contribution during your time in office? I think right now it would have to be the achievement of my senior membership. That was something that I really didn't know what it was until some of my colleagues were like, oh, hey, you know, you've done a lot of stuff. You've been on committees. You've done some work with APCO. You know, have you taken a look at this? And to be honest with you, I had never seen it before. I went in, took a look, and like, this is pretty cool to be one of the few that have gone through the process and been selected, approved by, you know, your chapter, and then being designated as a senior member, which I think is just really cool that we have something like that that shows progression, which is something that a lot of agencies don't even have of uh, that, like, promotional ladder as you could call it. So being able to say that I am a senior member and working towards life member, I think that is probably one of the coolest things that I've been able to do. Well, absolutely. Well, once again, this has been Reminiscing with History Makers. Charles, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure and uh, I appreciate you guys' time and effort for capturing the history of APCO.